the issue of sexual fluids mixing and its influence on the child was briefly mentioned within some of the Islamic sources in the previous video. Here is an article. The full link is below in, in the description. It is in reference to a hadith, Sahih Muslim 315, which will be looked at in detail next. In the Islam QA website, a questioner asks a peculiar teaching in Islam in which Muhammad taught that depending on the prevalence of the parents' sexual fluids at the time of copulation, this not only determines the gender of the child, but also has an impact on resemblance to that parent or their sibling. The question title is Views of the Scholars and Doctors on the Role of the Man's Water and the Woman's Water in Determining the Gender of the Fetus. The questioner concludes by saying, Modern science today tells us that the sperm and the egg together determine the genetic characteristics of the fetus and whether the woman's water comes first or not has nothing at all to do with determining the gender of the fetus, whether male or female. As you can see, the Hadith is contrary to this scientific fact. If Muhammad was a prophet and only spoke on the basis of inspiration from Allah, then how could he not know this fact? Rather, he said something contrary to science. Here is the relevant section of Sahih Muslim 315, where Muhammad said, The reproductive substance of man is white, and that of woman yellow, and when they have sexual intercourse and the male's substance prevails upon the female's substance, meaning her fluid, it is the male child that is created by Allah's decree. And when the substance of the female prevails upon the substance contributed by the male, a female child is formed by the decree of Allah. In the parenthesis, it says chromosomes and genes. Nowhere in the Arabic text does it say this. Rather, it is a semen that it's referring to when it says male's substance and female sexual fluid when it talks about the female's substance. The word used by Muhammad in the Hadith is money for both the fluid of the man and woman. When used in reference to men, it means sperm, and when used in reference to women, it means her sexual fluid, although sometimes it is translated as the female sperm or semen, because ancient people thought it had a bearing on a child's gender and resemblance, just as Muhammad did. However, the term money in modern lingua franca is used to mean the sperm, as this popular Arabic dictionary confirms, as well as a quick search. It does not, however, mean chromosomes or genes. To prove the previous hadith says nothing about chromosomes, rather it is referring to the fluids of the man or woman. In this hadith found in an nasai 11200, Muhammad describes the fluids by saying, the man's water is thick and white, and the woman's water is thin and yellow. Whichever of them comes first, the child would resemble that parent. This time Muhammad uses the word ma, which means water, to describe the sexual fluid. Somewhat embarrassing on a few fronts, in Sunan Ibn Majah 601, Muhammad's wife, Umm Salama, did not know what this fluid was. She says, in quote, Does that really happen? Muhammad then says yes and goes on to say, The water of the man is thick and white, and the water of a woman is thin and yellow. Whichever of them comes first or predominates, the child will resemble that parent. The prevalence of male or female sexual fluid has no bearing on the child's gender. Medical science proves that a child's gender is determined by the father. In other words, it is the male's sperm that determines the gender, because it depends entirely on which type of sperm meets the egg first. As a male sperm is programmed with XY chromosomes and XX chromosomes, and all eggs have one X chromosome, the male contributes the X or Y chromosome while the female contributes one of their X chromosomes. 
The gender is determined at the moment of fertilization by the combination of X and Y chromosomes it gets from the sperm. Since women carry XX chromosomes and men carry XY chromosomes, it follows that the man is always responsible for the baby's gender. A more detailed explanation is found in the scientific journal Nature, which mentions a child's biological sex is determined by the chromosome that the male contributes. In this government medical website, it says the chromosome from the father determines if the baby is born as male or female. Notice there's no mention of the prevalence of the man's white fluid or woman's yellow fluid as described by Muhammad in the aforementioned hadith. As it is becoming a pattern, Islamic teachings do not exist ex nihilo or from some sort of divine pronouncement from the heavens. They contain teachings, sometimes correct and other times incorrect statements from its predecessors, such as the ancient Greeks and other humans. Then it is passed off as divine knowledge by Muhammad, as an instruction he received from Allah. For example, Democritus of Abdera said that the gender depended on the parent whose semen it was the predominated as explained on page 764 from the works of Aristotle. Another pre-Socratic Greek philosopher called Hippon said that the thicker seed, meaning the semen, produced males, while the thinner seed, to mean the female's sexual fluid, produced females. This was recorded by Roman grammarian and historian Sensorinus hundreds of years before Islam and Muhammad. In this article called Gender Determination from a Jewish source called Talmudology, the full link is below. It quotes Dr. Fred Rosner, pictured here, who is Jewish and a professor of medicine at Mount Sinai School of Medicine. He is also the chairman of the Medical Ethics Committee of the State of New York. He is an internationally known authority as an expert on Jewish medical ethics having published eight books on the subject and almost 800 articles on all aspects of Jewish medical ethics and history. The website quotes his works who through his books cites biblical and Talmudic teachings about gender determination according to rabbinical teachings, which are curiously similar to what Muhammad later taught his followers. In this published article in the National Library of Medicine, Dr. Fred Rosner says the Talmud had something similar for gender determination. Notice this is similar to what Muhammad later espoused. The full link is below. It is highly probable, therefore, that Muhammad may not have got his teachings directly from the Greeks. Rather, it may have been from the Talmudic teachings from rabbis, which was subsequently incorporated within Islam via the Hadith collections. In reference to a previous Hadith cited from Sunan and Nisai 11200, there was another peculiar teaching when Muhammad said about the fluids go on to resemble the parents depending on whose fluid was prevalent. In the relevant section he said, whichever of them comes first, the child will resemble that parent. This need not only mean gender determination, but physical similarity. This is confirmed in another hadith, for example, it says in Sahih al-Bukhari 3938 that Muhammad said, as for the child, if the man's discharge precedes the woman's discharge, the child attracts the similarity to the man, and if the woman's discharge precedes the man's, then the child attracts the similarity to the woman. For a detailed explanation of what the previous hadith means about similarity, Ibn Hajar wrote a classical book called Fatul Bari. It is considered the most comprehensive commentary of Sahih al-Bukhari, a book that became the most celebrated and highly regarded work of all his works. 
Upon its publication, it was hailed as the greatest work of the age. Many dignitaries and scholars attended the celebrations that were held in Cairo, Egypt, a centre for Islamic learning for many centuries till this day. On Sahih al-Bukhari 3938, Ibn Hajar talks about the various opinions in that the child not only can resemble the parents, but also their siblings and their traits, depending on whose fluid was more prevalent at the time of copulation, in addition to the gender being determined by this method. Here is the Arabic text with the translation. Feel free to pause the video to read it in full. Today, it is understood that genetics and DNA that is inherited from parents determine these factors. It has nothing to do with whose sexual fluid is prevalent. As children inherit half of their DNA from each parent, half from the mother through the egg and half from the father through the sperm. This is explained in detail in this Harvard University website. The link is below. If a child looks more like one parent, it means they gained a higher proportion of the alleles from a parent with dominant ones. In other words, it is the expression of genes that matters, as there are recessive and dominant traits that are inherited. The dominant traits are traits that get expressed, even though a recessive trait gene is inherited as well as for each trait. So if the mother's genes are dominant for facial features, the child will resemble the mother more than the father. Shown here is a Punnett square devised by Cambridge professor and biologist Reginald Punnett. It shows if the other parent does not have the recessive genetic disposition, it does not appear in the phenotype of the children, but on average 50% of them become carriers. It has nothing to do with whose sexual fluids is more than the other, as Muhammad taught. Hadith literature says the semen stays in the womb for 40 days. For example, in Sahih Muslim 2645c, it quotes Muhammad as saying the semen stays in the womb for 40 nights. And in Sahih al-Bukhari 7454, Muhammad said, the creation of every one of you starts with the process of collecting the material for his body within 40 days and 40 nights in the womb of his mother. Then he becomes a clot of thick blood for a similar period, 40 days, and then he becomes like a piece of flesh for a similar period. Medical science says fertilization is possible as long as the sperm remain alive which is only up to five days in the woman's womb. As confirmed by this popular medical website, the full link is below. The idea that semen stays in the womb for 40 days as taught by Muhammad may have been derived from sources written by rabbis before Muhammad was born. For example, the full link is below where it says in the Babylonian Talmud, if she is not found pregnant, then she is not pregnant, and if she is pregnant, until 40 days from conception, the fetus is merely water. In Sahih Muslim 2645c, which was cited previously, it also said the gender is determined after 40 days. Here it is again, in which Muhammad went on to say, the semen stays in the womb for 40 nights. Then the angel gives it a shape. Zubair said, I think that he said, one who fashions that and decides whether he would be male or female. This is confirmed in numerable hadith, including this one in Sahih Muslim 2644, where Muhammad is quoted as saying, after 40 or 45 days of the sperm in the womb, the angel then asks Allah, my Lord, would he be male or female? There are more hadith that confirms that after 40 days is when the gender is determined. In Sahih Muslim 2645a, the angel comes after 42 days to create the child's flesh and bones and then the gender is determined. And in Sahih Muslim 2646, the gender is determined once the fetus has become a lump of flesh. Again, it seems Muhammad is getting these teachings 
from the teachings of rabbis as found in the Babylonian Talmud, which was first composed between 450 to 550 AD. The full link is below where it says, During the first three days after intercourse, one should pray that the seed not putrefy, that it will fertilize the egg and develop into a fetus. From the third day until the fortieth day, one should pray that it will be male. Although from the moment of conception the baby has the genetic information to either become a boy or girl, but because both sexes start out the same in the womb, doctors and parents have to wait for a certain period to find out, physiologically speaking, which gender the baby will eventually be. In this article, titled Boy or Girl, The Difficulties of Early Gender Prediction, the full link is in the description, written by obstetrician gynaecologist Dr. Patricia Santiago Munoz from UT Southwestern Medical Center, says it is not until about nine weeks at which point genital tubercles begin to develop. However, it is not until 14 or 15 weeks that the genitalia are differentiated. In other words, the earliest point in which the fetus develops the organs to determine its gender is around nine weeks. This is around 63 days at the very earliest, not the 40 days or so as the Hadith literature suggested. However, the gender is usually known about 14 weeks time. This is around 100 days. The point is, Whichever situation is looked at, the Hadith literature is still incorrect from a medical science point of view. So in conclusion, Muhammad taught a child's gender was determined by whichever fluid was prevalent during intercourse. Modern science says a child's gender is determined at the moment of fertilization and that the gender is always decided by the male via his sperm. In Islam it is taught resemblance of a child to their parent is due to sexual fluids. Modern science says a child may look more like one parent due to the higher proportion of alleles they get from the parent with dominant ones. It has nothing to do with whose sexual fluids was more at the time of copulation as found within Islamic sources. Despite the Quran making the claim about Muhammad in chapter 53 verses 3 to 4, nor does he speak out of his desire, this is nothing but a revelation that is conveyed to him. Some of the teachings found in Islam predate it and is found within human sources, such as those found within ancient Greek and Jewish Talmudic sources. These are the sources that may have actually inspired Muhammad rather than any real divine intervention.